iOS 17 is here and there's some really cool features along with some very useful changes. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Let's get into it. Widgets in iOS 17 are now interactive. This includes not just the home screen, but the lock screen as well. There are a bunch of first party interactive widgets. I think my favorite though is reminders. The ability to check off a task on the home screen or even the lock screen is so nice. No more having to jump into an app and tap on a bubble. The music app now has playback controls in its widgets, making it extra useful in this situation. It also displays album artwork along with the song and artist information. There's even a widget for displaying recommendations and top charts. The home app got a widget as well. There is a small and medium version. You can go into these and control smart home devices. Go into the settings of the widget and you can specify which device you want to control. Or you can leave it on recommended and it'll show you what it thinks you want. I can control lights, my garage door, fans right from this widget. For my thermostat though, it does kick me over to the home app because it's more than just a simple on off toggle. Shortcuts has a new small widget. This lets you place two shortcuts in one small widget. While this is nice, it's a bummer that it didn't go the route like the home widget and let users set up four shortcuts in the widget, especially because on the iPhone, the small widget takes up the same place as four app icons. Of course, third-party apps will be able to support interactive widgets. Widgetsmith, probably the most popular app for creating custom widgets, is killing it this year. There is now an option which brings cover flow to the iPhone. You can add your own albums and playlists to it and start playing music right from the home screen. There is also an interactive calendar widget where you can jump around and see upcoming events. Then there is an interactive photo widget which allows you to scroll through photos right on the home screen. And there's even more, but I'm gonna cover the rest of it in an upcoming video. Tally is a great example of an interactive third-party widget. This is a counting app and you can use the widget to add or subtract from your total. Another one is somebody made a bunch of games, including one of my favorites, Minesweeper. Then there's my beloved Timery. In Timery's widget, you can tap on different options to start or stop a timer. You can also tap on different menu options in the widget and it'll refresh what is being displayed. Dark Noise is my noise app of choice and it gives you the ability to set specific scenes and play them right from the widget. There are so many cool widget options. I could spend a whole video talking about them and, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'll be releasing a video about iOS and iPadOS 17 apps in the next few days. Standby is a way to make your iPhone useful even when you're not using it. Standby becomes enabled automatically when your iPhone is in landscape and is connected to power. It can either be via wireless charging or plugged in. It just has to have power and be in a stable landscape position. There are three different themes for standby and each has their own options. The first is the widget theme. Here you can have two sides, both of which you can add widgets to. Long press on either side and edit that selected stack. In here you can remove widgets along with turn on smart rotate and enabled suggested widgets. Hit the plus button in the top left corner and you'll get a widget picker just like the one on the home screen. There are all the first party options you would expect like batteries, photos, weather, clock, and more. There will also be third party options as well. Apps will have to update to support standby, so you may not see a lot of them right away, but check back periodically. During the beta period, I played with this particular theme for standby the most. Widgets are of course interactive in standby as well. Reminders being one of my favorite widgets, it worked really well in standby. I can have my task list sitting right in front of me at my desk, but out of the way. Calendar was also helpful. I don't have a lot of meetings, but I would keep smart rotate on. So standby would flip to a calendar right before a meeting or an event. Launcher gave me a way to quickly play music right from standby. Speaking of, the music widget is also in standby, complete with playback controls. Timery, of course, is one of my favorite apps, and I use the widget to show me how I've been tracking my time for that day. There are a ton more apps that I've been using with standby, and I will talk about them more in the apps video I mentioned. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service. So I worked in the IT field for about nine years. And at my last job one day, we decided to set up a fake coffee shop with an open network and a bunch of computers. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to see if we were snooping on those devices, what kind of data we could pull out from it. 
and it's scary what kind of data we were able to get. Now with Surfshark, your traffic is completely encrypted from your device to whatever its destination is. This protects your privacy. And this isn't about a, well, I have nothing to hide, so I have nothing to worry about kind of thing. Data is the new gold and people will do tricky stuff to get a hold of it. One thing I really appreciate about Surfshark is they don't keep logs. VPN services that do that, they're defeating the purpose of using a VPN because they're logging your traffic. With Surfshark, your data is encrypted. Also with Surfshark, you're able to change where your computer's location is coming from. So say you want to check out what streaming services offer in other countries, you can use that. Or if you're traveling abroad, you can use it to access your streaming service that you would normally have at home and finish the show that you're watching. I really like Surfshark. In fact, it's something I pay for out of my own pocket. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can go check it out and use code LOLLY at checkout to get an extra three months for free. The photos theme is particularly cool if you're a nostalgic person. This shows you a series of photos with the date. It will also display the date and location the photo was taken. If you long press on the photo, you can select from different modes, including featured, nature, pets, cities, and people. Hit the plus button in the top left corner to select your own album. Here you can pick from your photo albums. You can also swipe up and down to cycle through the different albums in this mode. The last theme is based all around the clock. There are a few options in here, the first being digital, then an analog clock. Next is a world clock, which shows your location. Solar has a nice gradient to it. Float is a fun overlapping clock. On any of these, you can hit the white dot to edit the color theme. I personally prefer the digital clock with a teal gradient. The digital clock not only has the time and date, but also the current weather of your location. If you're using an iPhone with an always on display, standby will stay active as long as it's connected to power and in landscape. For other iPhones, you'll have to nudge or tap it to wake it up. At night when you're sleeping, if you use standby, the color will shift to a red tint and the brightness will be turned way down. This is so that your phone isn't illuminating the room and disturbing your sleep. It's a nice touch, but I'm surprised Apple didn't change the Apple Watch's standby mode to match it. Standby has support for live activities as well. If you're running a timer from timer, you'll see a countdown at the top center of the display. You can tap on it and get a full screen view. When playing music or a podcast in standby, you will now get a full screen now playing window. This will show album artwork, metadata, have playback controls, and a timeline. You can even get volume controls at the top. Next to that is airplay controls. This way you can start playing back to a HomePod or AirPods, TVs, whatever. Timers also got a full screen mode. What I love about this is they have this animation of a progress bar and it fills up the more the timer counts down. Such a nice touch. Siri will also give you full screen responses in standby. With any of these full screen modes, you can swipe up to go back to your regular standby mode. If you have multiple of these, you can tap the button at the top to jump between them. Notifications come in via a full screen banner. These are nice because if I'm on the other side of the room, I can still read them. When you tap on them, Face ID will trigger and you can go right into the app. The coolest aspect of standby is the way it works with MagSafe pucks and other MagSafe chargers. MagSafe has a unique identification code that the iPhone can read when attached. This allows standby to remember your settings for each MagSafe puck. In my office, I use the widget mode. This allows me to see appointments, check off reminders, control audio playback and more in my bedroom i just use the digital clock i use this when i'm sleeping because i don't want a bunch of reminders or calendar events showing up magsafe remembers these settings and flips to the appropriate mode when connected to that magsafe puck this makes standby even more useful i can have multiple different setups in different places messages got some new features first the imessage app drawer has been redesigned the thing that still bugs me though is that photos is buried in here. But with the drawer, you can long press and rearrange items. You'll find third party apps under the more tab. You can also drag and drop these into the main view if you wish. Messages now has search filters. You can search for individual people, keywords like pizza or any content types like photos or links. If you are replying to a specific message, you no longer have to long press on it. You can simply swipe right. This is so much faster. Audio messages got some improvements. You can now scrub through an audio message. So if you have somebody that sends you a long one, you can skip all the fluff. You can also pause when listening to them so you don't have to go back to the start. 
You can tap and hold on an audio message to adjust the playback speed. And finally, there is transcription for audio messages. So if you're like me and don't want to listen to somebody have a one-sided conversation, you can just read them. For those that use iMessage stickers, you can now create your own from photos. Go to stickers and be on the second option. Hit the plus button and it will open your photo library. Grab any photo and iOS will pull the subject from that image. It will then be added to your sticker library. If you select a live photo, the sticker will animate. Long press on a sticker to rearrange it in your gallery, add an effect, or delete. If you add an effect, you can change the style of the sticker to an outline, comic, puffy, or shiny. Not only can stickers be sent as their own messages, but they can be attached to other messages as well, similar to the back tap icons. Stickers can now be used in most apps that support emojis. This means you can attach them in things like a notes document. There is now an iMessage app called Check-In. This allows you to send somebody else a card for them to keep track of where you are and where you are going. They can use this to keep track of the route you are taking along with your phone's battery life and cell signal. When sending the card, you can specify either where you are going or how long it will take you to get where you're wanting to go. The other person will get a notification if it's taking longer than expected or if you veered off course. This is a really cool safety feature I hope people will use. The keyboard in iOS 17 got some big changes. First, the autocorrect features are massively updated, and this is extremely good. I'm horrible at spelling, and it caught a lot more of my mistakes than iOS 16 did. When it autocorrects a word, you will get a temporary underline. You can tap on this to go back to the previous version. The keyboard now supports better predictive typing. This isn't just for words, but for sentences and phrases as well. When you see this prompt come up, just hit the space bar and it will fill in either the sentence, phrase, or word. Then there is improved dictation. I use dictation a lot when taking notes and even sometimes when writing scripts. The improved speed and grammatical changes are great. The new dictation is fast and very accurate, but every once in a while, I do have to go in and fix some minor issues. In iOS 17, there is now the ability to create contact posters. These allow you to design your own card for when you call someone. When creating one, you can take a photo, attach an image, use a emoji, or just monogram it. Once you have an image selected, you can specify the name you would like to use to show up. Tap on the text and select the font, font weight, and color. There is also a color picker at the end so you can pick any color you wish. Swipe on the contact poster to choose from different styles, similar to the lock screen. You can design multiple contact posters, but can only have one selected at a time. It would be interesting if you could set up some for work contacts and then others for personal contacts. Once you have your contact card set up, you can choose what to share and how to share it. Personally, I just let anyone with my contact info have access to it. I really like these contact posters as they are a way for you to decide what shows up when you call somebody or message somebody. When sending somebody a voicemail, you will now see a live transcription of the message. You can choose to even answer it while they are leaving a message. This is pretty cool, especially for those phone numbers you don't recognize, but it turns out it's an important call. FaceTime got some updates as well. The biggest one is you can now use your iPhone and Apple TV together to make FaceTime calls. This works like continuity camera on the Mac. It uses the iPhone's camera and mic, but displays everything on your TV. I can see this being big for family calls or even meetings. If you plan on using this feature, you will definitely want a vertical iPhone stand. With FaceTime, you're now able to leave messages. This applies to both audio and video calls. When receiving a message, you can view them on your iPhone or even your Apple Watch. You can also save those messages to the Photos app if you wish. When FaceTiming somebody, you now have the option to turn on portrait mode. This is the F-stop icon. This gives a bokeh effect on your side of the call. There's also an ability to react with your hands. You can give a thumbs up or thumbs down and this will animate a reaction. You can also put your hands together and form a heart to make a heart appear. Put up the peace sign to get balloons to float up around you. Two peace signs will make confetti appear. While these reactions are really cool, I highly doubt people are going to remember how to make confetti appear or make it rain. The thumbs up and the thumbs down one are probably the only obvious ones and I have a feeling most people will discover these by accident. AirDrop got a really cool feature for sharing contacts. Bring two iPhones close to each other. 
you will see a glowing animation at the top and then each person's contact card will appear. From there, you can choose what information to share with the other person, or you can just choose to receive information. This is going to make sharing context so much easier. Now you don't have to hand somebody your unlocked phone for them to type it in. AirDrop also supports auto sharing selected content. The way this works is you need to have the other person's contact info. Then select some files or photos. We'll use the Photos app for our example. Bring the two phones next to each other and it will be prompted to automatically share that content with the person. In a future update, if you start airdropping content and leave before it's completed, iPhones will continue to send the data but over the internet iOS and iPadOS 17 now have support for multiple timers. When creating these timers, you can label them in the clock app. Personally, I find it much easier to ask Siri to set a 10 minute oven timer. Speaking of Siri, you can now drop the hey phrase and just say hey, Siri. You can also use Siri while you're on a call. Say you want to set up a reminder about something. You can also interrupt Siri if you change your mind or if it's just going off the deep end. And if you want to follow up right after with another request, you can do it without needing to say the trigger phrase. This is my favorite part of the Siri update. Maps now supports an offline mode. Tap on your icon and go into offline maps. Select download new map, then type the place you wish to download. I went ahead and added Yosemite. It's a place I go to often and it has terrible cell service. When downloading a new map, you can make sure it updates periodically in the background. You can also optimize the storage if you plan on only using these maps for a one-off trip. It will then be deleted after it hasn't been used for a while. There's also trail guides and maps. Combining this with offline mode is probably a really smart move if you aren't familiar with that area. Photos is an app that gets interesting changes every year, and this is no exception. Visual lookup has been expanded beyond signs and contact info. You can now reverse lookup recipes from an image. If your car is displaying symbols you aren't aware of, you can use this to find out what they are. You can even use this for those strange symbols on clothes that nobody knows what they mean. Well, now you know what they mean because you can use lookup. This is a really cool feature, and it's awesome to see it expanded. The most important feature that is added to photos though is cats, but more importantly dogs, are now in face recognition. This treats our furry pals just like people as it should. You specify their name and it finds all the photos that match them. Like I mentioned in my iPad OS 17 walkthrough, this was a fairly disappointing year for shortcuts. No real interesting actions and on top of that some major regressions, including the fact that shortcuts now hide shortcuts in the all shortcuts tab. The one thing I do really want to bring up again for those that haven't seen my iPad OS video is that all shortcut personal automations no longer require a confirmation when running. This even includes location based triggers. This is a big step for making these more usable. I'm going to make a video all about how I'm using personal automations later on. Find My now has support for sharing devices with other people, meaning I can share the AirTag to my car keys with my dad so he can see them. Kind of a cool feature, especially if you share devices between multiple people and don't want the alerts that an AirTag is with you going off. iOS 17 has been a really interesting release. I really like a lot of the features that we got. There's not major overall changes, but there's a lot of low hanging fruit that users have been asking for for years, like interactive widgets. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. I have a ton of stuff coming up. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.